Hi, welcome back. Here we are once again with one of the directors from the Visual Grammar course. Visual Grammar, the language of filmmaking, provided for you by the WA, the Workers Educational Association. We've been doing a chat series here, talking with the students of the course and finding out their journey, why they started on this journey, how they went on this journey, how was it for you, that kind of thing, and where you hope to go from here. So, my name is Chase Johnson Lynch, as you already know, and I'm right now here with Matt Schill, fresh yeah. off from the hills of Glastonbury. Hmm. Uh, so, Matt, as one of our original Alpha Class students here at the uh, Visual Grammar course, can you tell me um, how did you find out about the course and why did you want to participate? Uh, well, I've been interested in filmmaking for many years, and I was looking for a course in Liverpool that I could uh, go on and I saw the WA advertised and so uh, I applied for it and uh, came here and met you. Right, right. Well, you were also uh, with me on a Merseyside Script Initiative, so as a writer yeah. you were exploring that avenue for a long while. And then it was like with all the scripts that came through, we both agreed, kind of like, hey, we should start filming these things. Yeah, I started off writing and we were working on, on short scripts. Um, and the natural progression is once you've got the written script and it's great, mm. uh, the most logical thing next step is to actually make the short film into, to turn the short script into a film. So that's what we started doing. And um, then I wanted to develop my skills. And uh, a course like this is, is what I was looking for to develop my skills. Yeah, because I mean, a lot of times people could just buy a camera and then call themselves a director. It's like putting on a hat. But then it also is is that everybody has their own form of learning. You know, whether it's through watching films or going to school. Uh, what was it for you? Uh, well, I've always loved film from an early age. Mm -hmm. uh, loved black and white movies, and um, and uh, so yeah. So and I was always very creative. So. I started making short films with my brothers when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. And um, then when I left school, I got a job. And then over the years, still interested in doing it. And then I thought, well, I want to make the opportunities. And I thought, well, I've got to make the opportunities happen myself. So I joined a few groups, and, and that's where I met you. Mm -hmm. And um, and it kind of just snowballed from there. You start meeting people, and filmmaking is a collaborative process. So yeah. joining groups is, I think, an essential thing. You can't do it on your own. It's also an inspired medium as well. Mm. So, I mean, kind of like, you know, if you meet the right kind of people, your juices get flowing. And it's never too late to actually pursue that dream. And, and everything. Not like I'm saying that like you're old. We're all old in some form or another. But, you know, you, you know you've know you always wanted to pursue it, like you just said, making films as a kid. And, you know, everybody has to go into the real world. And, you know, you kind of like return it back to you. You say, hey, look, I'm going to do this course. And you've been here ever since. So it's like I said, you know, one of the alpha class. Mm -hmm. as we move into, you know, like Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, <laughs> and everything else like that. So let's talk about your film journey. So do you remember what your first film was in, uh, in the course? Yeah, yeah. It was, um, it was in, the, in the basement, mm -hmm. and I was dragging a, a girl across the floor <laughs> with a noose around the neck. Uh, she's screaming, and then, and then she gets murdered. Uh, the, the lesson was, right, with the props you've got available to you now, you got five minutes to think of a story and film it. So in five minutes, I had uh, a creepy seller, a noose, and a and girl, girl, and a girl willing to be. <laughs> so, <laughs> the first, <laughs> the first thing was go out and do right. Yeah. <laughs> so like make it like a you know like a horror film or just film in general to go out and do. And so I love it how we have this really huge basement, and Matt goes, hmm, noose. Girl, <laughs> <laughs> that's all you need. The basic elements. Trust me, trust film. me. When we look at your filmography, we understand where it all began. So, all right. So, started out with that, but I mean, how was that process? Because you know, already you already consider yourself a filmmaker, and then now you're kind of like asked because there was a theory involved before. You know, you just push yeah. into the pool. But so, how was that for you? Did that intrigue you? You know, the learning process. And just just going forth, you're like, well, I don't get the chance to prepare. I don't, I don't. Am I supposed to write a script and everything? Say, like, nah, man, just go out and shoot something. Yeah, well, 
I think it's good because you, you can, in a way, especially if you're a guerrilla filmmaker, mm. is you tend to spend all your time preparing and yes. not actually Too much time. filming. And you go, well, I'm, I've already got limited things, so I've got to plan and over plan. And there's a danger that you, you over plan so much that you don't actually get around to making anything. Um, mm. Whereas if you're given a task of, right, uh, you've got five minutes to plan something, shoot it. Um, then you, you've kind of got to work on, you know. You got to work on your feet. instincts. Yeah, you got to yeah. work on your feet. You got to improvise, and everything is everything is organic. And so, so tell me about that. Is that because after that film, then you made a couple of other films, and so in doing that, you were asked to, you know, have an assignment. So, like this course, is not just kind of like a, a theory course or a practical course. It's kind of like a course that you have assignments and. Because it's a group of directors, they all have the same assignments, yeah. you know. And then we would actually view it, you know, the films that people have made. So, how is that process for you? Kind of like, you know, it's not working in collaboration. It's just like kind of like uh, working in consumption. Yeah. Well, the good thing about the, the class model is, um, you know, you've got to do your homework really for the for the following week. Hopefully. So you uh, so once you know what the assignments are. Straight away, you can start thinking. It, it can inspire you. I mean, writing stories or making films, you need some kind of inspiration or some nudge, mm -hmm. something that you see and you go, "Oh, that will make it interesting." Or just one line, and you think that that could be a whole story. So, mm -hmm. getting these uh, assignments from yourself, we, I, myself and the other classmates, uh, start thinking and having the same. And this is the interesting thing about filmmaking and storytelling: is we all got the same information. And we all ended up with completely different films. But we all films. hear it differently. That's yeah. what I like. You all hear it differently. Yeah. And you all approach it differently too. And that's where the actual theme of the course and every course that uh, followed their force was style and technique. Mm -hmm. Work on your style and technique because that is how you become a director. Not because you own a camera. Not because you have ideas as a writer. Not because you have dreams as an actor. But because you have a style and technique which makes you unique. So whether you're a Spielberg or a Tarantino, if you watch a Spielberg film, you know what you're going to get. If you watch a Tarantino film, you know what you're going to get. Imagine giving them both the same assignment. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, you would get something really interesting watching Tarantino do a Christmas movie. Mm. You know, that's what I feel anyway. So, um, so moving on into your filmography, you know, like you kind of like went down a dark road with your films. I think in the beginning you started to do films in isolation. Would you would you say that? Um, Meaning, like you would do it outside of class and come in. Here's my film. I did a bit of that uh, when we were filming in this building because there's a lot of films being made all at the same time. The mm. danger we were overlapping. So what I found was um, uh, no one was using the toilet and. <laughs> The good thing about the toilet is there's two doors to get into it, mm -hmm. which means I could cut the sound off. So yeah. I felt my first two, two, my first two films really were, in, were filmed in the toilet, which was the um, Angels with Dirty Faces homage, mm -hmm. and the uh, the Farting Detective, which was the, the Farting Detective, yeah. the Colin Hyde script. So yeah. uh, both of those were done in the toilet, mainly purely because um, it was a lot more soundproofed than the other films. Because when I saw some of the other films. When you could see the thing, you could hear dialogue of another film mm. being filmed yeah. around the corner. Unfortunately, and, but if I won, so so learning that, I went right. There's two doors there. It'll cut the sound off. Well, all right. Well, let's talk about those two films. Would you consider them like amongst your? Well, I don't know if you consider them amongst your papers. We'll get to that. But let's talk about those two films because they both were well received. Um, and we talked about we talked about one of them actually with another uh, interview and everything like that. So we talked about you. Um, but Angels with Dirty Faces, um, really, uh, that's where, for me, your style and technique started to develop and shine. Yeah. And so tell us what what, what became commonplace in your films. Uh, <laughs> but it, it was you who pointed it out. But uh, I, I, You uh, never knew, but it's true. It's is, it is the foot shot. Um, all my films have shots of feet in them. Not that I've got a foot fetish of any way, but um, uh, in, in Angels with Dirty Faces, um, it was the end of the film where um, Rocky character, Jimmy Cagney character, is walking uh, along death row to be electrocuted. I mean, the film is a very long corridor, and I was filming in a toilet. <laughs> in a very, very short, short corridor. corridor. So um, I had to work out how I could make a very short corridor about 10 times longer. 
Yeah. So I did that by um, filming the faces as they're walking towards me, and then uh, cutting it with shots of the feet, uh, and going backwards and forwards to give the impression of of uh, a long shot. And it worked really well. It was it, if everyone who saw it was wondering where it was filmed. And when I told them it was this <laughs> tiny corridor, yeah. they couldn't get over it. But uh, that's when I realised uh, I do I, I shoot lots of people's feet, which I never really consciously did. But no, when yeah, I look back, you need, to think, <laughs> about, you need to think about that. It has to because it's visual grammar, right? So you have to have an idea like why, Matt? Why feet? Yeah, I, I'm not quite sure. But once it was pointed out to me that, that I did, uh, it kind of became a bit of a motif for me that. I have to put feet in it. It's a bit like Alfred Hitchcock always has to be in his film. In my ones, he always has to have a shot of feet in it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but feet are a very interesting narrative because um, uh, be you've visual. Also made for walking. Well, yeah, but with a visual grammar, the, the aim is to can you convey a story mm -hmm. with minimal dialogue? Yeah. And if you're filming feet, no one is talking, so you've got that. But it gives. Um, it also shows. Um, uh, movement and passage of time and, yeah, and again you can always tell a lot by, by people's feet by the, the footwear if you know you, you, you get an impression straight away yeah. of the genre of type of thing and, and the sense of how and whatever so before you, anyone speaks you, you've got an idea yeah that's true so um, so then the other film then I said let's talk about was uh the Fart Detective, which was like, um, I hated this film. <laughs> I just thought, this is one joke too far. You know, coming from America, I'm very, you know, with the humor is very scatological. You know, there's always a toilet flusher at the right point in time. You know, and Matt decided to have his detective. Um, yeah. Well, this is, one the, this is one of the assignments where we all got, uh, it was a bit more specific. All of us had the same... Not only the same uh, subject, but the, the it was same the interpretation script. assignment, which I said was fantastic when we talked about it last yeah. time in our film noir course. So everybody had to choose what kind of detective was going to receive the information or receive the job, yeah. and you chose. Well, I went. I went down the comedy noir route because uh, it's interesting. Cause they want some did seriously, some did it funny, some did it very mm -hmm. avant-garde. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, I, I filmed it in the toilet because it was quiet. So. Uh, because the, the 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 stage direction didn't say, or well, scene direction didn't say um, where it was based. It was yeah, it's your purely, choice. Your choice dialogue. as a director. Yeah. So um, I thought it'd be a, a, a down on heel detective. Yeah. Uh, it would be fun if he had his office was just uh, a toilet cubicle. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, now, now, let me let me point out though. I like, let me preface what I was trying to say about I hated it, but. I was wrong because what happened was when we had the screening of the films, it was the most popular film you know, for the audience that night. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's an interesting thing. When you edit films, uh, you're hoping, especially with comedy, you think it's funny, uh, be on your own. You and then funny, yeah. when you show it to people and you show it individually, they go, yeah, it's not that funny. But when I think comedy works better in a, in an a, with an audience, and that night we had about fifty to one hundred. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, uh, they got the jokes and the visual gags. Yeah. And when especially, the, especially when he was one of many of the same type of detective, yeah. and they knew it was your choice. That also made it even more funnier. Yeah, I think I like to do a bit of comedy because if you do a serious film with, and the, an audience watches it, you get no reaction from them. Yeah, no. If it's the most serious film, they go, mm, yeah. yeah. But with a comedy, they'll laugh and you get you, you know it's worked. And if they don't laugh, then you know it's awful. Yeah. But in this case, it, uh, it, it got a good laugh. Well, you, I mean, you like comedy. I mean, I mean uh, that. I mean, it's no secret, you know. I mean, because sometimes you like to dabble into the acting side. You know, and like you, you, you played in uh, what's Jamie's film? The, yeah, the one, the Mars Brothers, the Mars Brothers yeah. thing. So I mean, that 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 was that was pretty that was pretty funny and stuff. But also too is uh, uh, looking at your other films. You had the piano tune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where that, that was uh, quite Jamie, funny. I didn't, I didn't get it that one either. But maybe it's just me. I don't know. But <laughs> well, no, it's it's um, uh, that was. That was literally done at the end. We'd, I'd been helping other people film us. Yeah, we we helped each other out in the class. Yeah. And then it was literally, we had five minutes before we locked up and I hadn't actually got, we ran out of time and I went, right, um, I've got this idea because we had, again, 
what props do you have? We've got, we've got mm. piano, and we've got two people not doing anything for five minutes. And literally, I filmed the whole thing in five minutes. Yeah. And um, I just did lots of cutaways in, in a few seconds, and then put it all together. And, yeah. Uh, no, exactly. But uh, so let's go back to even though you love a bit of comedy, you, your your mainstay is horror. Mm. So you know, like uh, one of your let's go to one of I think is one of your best films, might that you think? But uh, it had to be you. Which one was that? <laughs> it's <his> film, right? <laughs> the I one where you the killer, <laughs> the lottery killer. Oh, the lottery killer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it called? Yeah, uh, yeah. It could be you. Yeah. It had to be you. It could be yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why he didn't get it. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I thought that was a really great film. Tell us about that. Uh, again, so that was uh, the horror aspect. So we had to do um, stalking. So. Uh, no, no, we didn't have to do stalking. We didn't you have to do stalking. I, I, we I, didn't I, have to do stalking. You had uh, to do it was, I think it was suspense, wasn't it, we were looking for. I think it was the element. And um, so, again, when, when Chase does his uh, lectures... Every, everything is a homage and interpretation or uh, first, yeah. you know, enter, exit yeah. kind of thing. Also. So, uh, yeah, in the film it had to be you, or it could be you. Um, uh, the homage <laughs> film. So we were looking at a horror right, thanks, film. Thanks, yeah. So... Um, when Chase does his lectures at the class and, and, mm. and they're put on the page, um, we're all taking notes. So as I'm listening, I'm, I'm thinking up of ideas. And so I wanted to do a serial killer film because I hadn't done one. And I was wondering how I could do a serial killer in two minutes. So Well, come on, Matt. You know, you know you never give yourself a time limit because all yeah. your films, Matt is the one who over... Stretches the I, time limit. Very, so very stop, stop that. Yeah. Just say you wanted to do a serial killer film. I want to do a serial killer film, <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, the, the time limit that Chase puts on it, um, I always exceed. I don't think I've. I think very few films have actually yeah, been on time. time. They always no. run um, over time. Yes. five, ten minutes. George looked at here. So <laughs> yeah, so uh, for that, I, I had an idea for a story, which as I was developing it, I want to make into a, a longer, short film, but. Um, I focused on what I thought would, were the scariest elements of it, of a masked man stalking someone. And so I needed street scenes. So I filmed it outside of class because as a, a serial killers don't loot around cinemas that much. <laughs> so um, I, I enrolled the, uh, my wife to, to walk down the streets while I... Filmed her feet? F- filmed their feet. I had a fair <laughs> feet were in there. Uh, filmed their feet. Um, it was just before Christmas. And... Um, yeah, and uh, so I did that and and slowly chopped it up. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, like, uh, but it, it was it was a real clever film. Um, the the way you do, the way you did it in in the timing of uh, the kills uh, for the lottery numbers and stuff. You know, yeah. So, yeah. I, mean, so I, I enjoyed doing the editing element of it then because it was for to kill you. You've got the suspense of of someone stalking someone mm-hmm. and that person's getting more and more scared and start running. And then suddenly, snap! You you kill them. So, the quick editing uh, yeah. shocks the audience and then get, gives them a fright. Well, so speaking of that whole like time aspect, this seems to be another kind of like flavor of yours because we had a course that was um, just the time tr- time films. Yeah. You know the visual gamma course, and you know your film and that um, had a lot to do with time because well they all do, but in yours mm-hmm. you use a clock like you kind of like um, did and it, it it could be you. So tell us about uh, that film. Uh, yeah, so that, another one that was about ten minutes long. It should have been two. Uh, uh, yeah, so that the element was uh, was about time and and so my story centered on time travel if you could travel forward in time 24 hours what what could happen in that gap of where you are now in 24 hours time and um to make it interesting the guy jumps 24 hours thinking the world is going to be exactly the same as where he left it but when he arrives it's com- the, the world is completely deserted there's no one around at all and uh, he looks to find out what happened it's like um, he missed the apocalypse. Yeah, <laughs> well, you, you can't work out at all where everyone's gone, and has he jumped to a parallel universe where mm. no one is here, or has his time travel jump 
made everyone disappear or you know so it's, it's unclear but he'd also put a safety f- feature on the time machine that if anything went wrong it would take him back to where he left and when he so when he starts looking for where everyone is uh, he realizes that the clock is ticking down mm-hmm. and when he rushes back to get back to the time machine he misses and he, he misses leaves the window and he leaves without him so he's trapped on the earth on his own for the rest of the time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's really, it's really uh, interesting um, because that was supposed to be trying to create different form, like as a director, how would you utilize time travel and everything? It was really interesting. So I'm saying what my favorite films were. What about, what was yours? Um, I liked the Angels with Dirty Faces. Mm-hmm. Um, I did like that because I thought the performances were really good there. Yeah, it was, right. Uh, and, and the corridor scene, I'm, I'm very pleased with. Only because... I know how short it was, and and, and it was quite. And long. actually, the the original edit you made was much longer, and then like I had to come in and do a re-edit to just give us some semblance of a <laughs> time because like uh, you know because that also happened with this uh, uh, this time film was um, what I want to talk about was sometimes you know directing is not as easy as we think. Uh, when we're doing it guerrilla style because like you had a table you had a round table there was three rolling yeah so you know uh, as we were talking about that scene you know where uh, three people around the table mm-hmm. and that's always one of the most hardest things to shoot as a new director because it's like it's kind of like they call it like the poker table shot you know where yeah. there's like four people so you had three people around the table and you chose to shoot each um, person individually Whereas, like, I can't really remember because I don't think, because I think I would have put it in there. But did you do a master shot of all of us, um, like, from over there? I did, I did, a, I did do a master shot. Right. Um, but the most, most of the majority of the scene is interspersed with the, uh, yeah, the three yeah, things. Yeah. So, in that shot, um, I just used one camera. So, um, mm-hmm. the, all the three performances were improvised. And the problem with, improvi- with um, doing a conversation improvised is it's a nightmare to edit. Exactly. So exactly. Um, yeah, I know what that. I did was I did the whole conversation uh, all on one person each time. And the benefit of that is when you get to the third version of it, pretty much the three characters have fleshed out their, their part so well. Mm. Um, the, the third <coughs> shot is really the, the, the one you're going to use the most. Yeah. And the first two versions can be used as cutaways or if you've got a good performance, you can disperse it. And the other benefit with editing is you can uh, you put the dialogue over someone else's shot, so you get the reaction shot. Yeah, which is which is what we did because I mean, like uh, as you said, I mean, we were able to like get just a reaction shot of say Midhart or of um, and uh, just cut that in with the underlaying the better the audio. I was just saying this is like when I do something like that, I would do a master shot and then try to make sure that what do I really like from this person. Like I was sitting there, or this person in my house sitting there, or this person in my house sitting there. So whether it's him grabbing for the, uh, you know, the toothpick or his reaction to, oh my God, why do I got the short straw? You know, those kind of different things. So I'm just trying to say, so that way you don't have to do the whole thing because you got the master. The master first is always the safest way of going. But I mean, you know, it's a school of thought for everyone where it comes around to doing those circle shots of people is that always do the master first, you know, yeah. and then, then, then. But your way, it's not like a right or wrong way. It's just like, it's good to talk about the different ways because most people just see the film and it's good because it cuts up, yeah. you know, nicely and everything. But we're also talking about the problems because they're saying the different every time. So the secret is, it's like, well, we got the voiceover in there, or we just got the reaction shot of another line. So yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, in this shot, um, it was to establish a, um, a situation, and really like a sort of two minute film. Um, you've got to create a new world uh, order type thing mm-hmm. uh, for the audience to engage in and yeah. accept, so they'll follow the story. If you, if you don't have that um, foundation of the story initially, people won't buy into it. Mm-hmm. So um, with the conversation, we did the improvisation um, for time limits. Uh, a master shot is handy because it does give a foundation of, of that scene. Uh, but because I wanted to convey quite a lot of information in a short space of time, um, having people talking around the table and, and close-ups was a, a good way of 
conveying uh, the humanity of the story. So yeah. people would say, uh, would buy into the three characters quite quickly. If you relied too much on a massive shot, um, people would feel detached from the characters. And as one of them was going to draw the short straw and become the time traveller, uh, you had to buy into all three characters quite quickly. So that's why I went for that. And I say, um, one of the important things is continuity. Uh, when you do an improvisation, and for anyone who does it, is try and keep an eye on, on the uh, continuity because when it comes to edit, um, that's when you find the uh, the faults in the, in the shots. <laughs> like, 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 like your recent film that, you know, we just watched earlier where I said that there wasn't enough continuity, uh, enough cutaways, and you said, oh, I thought there was. I said, like, no, there wasn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's always, it's always handy to get uh, cutaways uh, yeah. and just take some more shots and... When you're filming, especially if you're running gunning, um, it's always handy to take do more cutaways than you think you need because you think you've got enough, but um, if you've only got one day to film it, you don't really have time these days, even with digital cameras, to really um, look back on your footage and assess what you've got. You can't do the rushes properly, so do the cutaways, mm. and it's best to do the cutaways and then throw them out, then realise you've got a gap, uh, because then no can the best editor can't really fix a gap in, in, the, in the story. No, exactly. So, I mean, you know, I mean, like, uh, you know, as we see, you know, Matt, uh, extensive knowledge, you know, one of the first of the originals and everything. And also Matt is one of those that came in already with an experience in film and filmmaking as well. And so, so where do you hope to go from here? You know, as we ask everyone else. Um, well, this summer I want to uh, make a longer short film about 30 to 40 minutes mm. based on one of the, the, the films I made in uh, class. So that's the uh, it could be you film, um, so it's a bit of a serial killer film. So to really get the the story, you need a lot more serial killing going on. So the horror genre is I, I quite enjoy, and it's quite immediate. And short films does lend itself to horror because you need to really scare people quite quickly. So I'm planning on shooting that uh, over the summer, and hopefully put it to film festivals and see how it goes. But still continue to work collaboratively because as I say. Um, the good thing about this class is um, you have to work collaboratively with people. So even if you're a filmmaker, um, you can't go home and after the class and go, right, I'm going to do this on my own because it becomes a bit too monotone. You've got, um, even authors need to collaborate with people to get the performance. So as I say with the improvisation, um, you've got to give characters, uh, you can give direction to actors. Um, you need to give them enough for them to work on but you've got to rely on the actors to, to flesh out the gaps that you leave yeah. and let their characters become their own. And then when you film it, hopefully you will get a performance which you never expected on the page when you wrote it or when you read it. Yeah. Um, and the actors will bring some a new element to the story. So when you look back on it, it hopefully will look better than you expected because you've, you've got an idea what it's going to end up like. And if anyone who makes films, it, the films never end up exactly like you wanted to. Never. Um, so if you're a control freak, it would be very difficult <laughs> to be a filmmaker. You've got to um, give a little um, and take a, a bit more in return. And your final film should be some a collaboration of everyone who worked on it and should be greater than the sum of its parts. Couldn't say it better myself. You know, Matt, I just want to thank you for uh, coming in. You know, I uh, really enjoy talking to the directors of the Visual Grammar course. Matt Chill, I'm Chase Johnson Lynch. You've been watching uh, the WA Chat series on Visual Grammar, the language of filmmaking. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, better <laughs>